is unbelievable, guys. Let's check out this 747. It's got a second life, just been reactivated after years of storage. Hi, my name is Lloyd Robinson and a couple days ago I had the privilege of flying this aircraft out of long-term storage in the desert. It was born about uh, 30 years ago and started off flying passengers. Uh, flew passengers for about 15 years then was converted to a freighter and then was put into long-term storage, fate unknown. Uh, it was in storage for a few years and uh, it's just now being reactivated. It's going to go undergo some heavy maintenance and then it'll be flying uh, revenue freight and cargo get. I'm in the lower electronics uh, bay here, forward uh, electronics bay. Down there below my right foot, that's the, uh, the nose gear of the aircraft. And there's this ladder that we can extend. This slides right down to the, uh, to the nose gear so we can climb up this ladder onto the lower E&E &E deck and then up this ladder up to the main cargo deck. Oh man, this is hard work. Like never climb up from the gear, like it's not easy. And you get stuck here. You can get stuck here forever with the 747. All right, Sam, let's go take a look at the view outside of my office window. Stairways to the heaven. Here I come. Looks really good, I have to say. Everything's functional, right? Yoke is really heavy on the 74. If you're Airbus, you can do like joystick flying, light and easy. But if you want to fly Boeing, yeah, better go to gym. Better start lifting the dumbbells. I know that even if you have an old car, right, in the garage, you know, you can't really just drive out after four years of storage, right? It probably won't start. So I knew there's probably a tons of work before you're able to take off. The guys in the desert must be sweating like hell. They did lots of work, months and months. So Sam, before I show up to fly the aircraft, uh, the FAA's designated airworthiness representative comes and signs a, uh, a special flight permit for us, and that's uh, uh, approving all the work that the uh, maintenance team has done to reactivate the aircraft. We also did some high-speed taxi tests. Uh, just a uh, uh, last minute test uh, before the aircraft flew. Smooth. Yeah. Power on. Where did you put the trim? Up to 90 knots, pull the thrust levers back, and the uh, speed brakes are going to come back automatically. And then right down here, uh, these auto brakes that it would normally be set to uh, RTO, rejected takeoff. Uh, those automatically kick on uh, max braking on the airplane, so it's uh, it, it, it gets your attention as soon as you pull the thrust levers back, and those two things happen to uh, slow you down as fast as possible, as fast as you possibly can. Uh, the airplane tips over <laughs> a little bit, and uh, you're thrown against the straps. It's even pretty exciting knowing that it's coming and most people that uh, have rejected takeoffs, you know, if you're a line pilot flying around, you're starting the takeoff not knowing that that's coming so it would be uh, an even bigger uh, shock but it's still pr plenty thrilling to, to do it when uh, you plan to do it. So another thing that was unique about that flight from Mojave to San Bernardino is because the aircraft had been parked for so long. Uh, the FAA asked us to ferry the aircraft with the landing gear still extended over to this maintenance facility and one of the checks that the, they've just finished doing in the maintenance facility here is called a gear swing. It's exactly what it sounds like. They put the aircraft up on big jacks, raise the airplane up off the ground, the gear actually comes up off of the ground and then they retract the landing gear while it's sitting here in the hangar. It's pretty impressive.
And isn't that great feeling? Uh, it's an awesome feeling to see that uh, the aircraft is going to keep flying and not just turned into razor blades and beer cans. So Sam, I hate to tell you this, but this is not the first 747 you've missed out on. We actually ferried another aircraft out of long-term storage and then to a uh, maintenance facility last month, the uh, Sky Blue uh, 747-400 freighter. After a hard day at the office, you can see uh, we have our own uh, sleeping quarters uh, here, double bunk beds right behind the cockpit. Roomy enough. This part here is actually probably the most essential equipment on board to make coffee for the pilots. And I'm so impressed. The galley, everything's been restored after storage. Because I've been to a hard, I've been to the desert before. There's a lot of planes that they pulled out all the parts and everything scattered around. But you know, it's impressive to see when the plane's going back. Oops. Looks like I just broke this part. Sorry. All right, Sam broke the coffee pot. We're not going anywhere now. Yes. How long you guys been working on this airplane? Uh. In this, especially in this, like uh, four months. Four months, mm -hmm. my gosh. All working now? Yep. Yeah. Except I broke the coffee. That's the essential equipment there. I okay. broke that. You have to rework on that. Okay. I'm just kidding. I'm just <laughs> kidding. <laughs> I'm fascinated about your job because you ferry planes out of desert storage. So Sam, I started my airline career back in 1999 and I stayed uh, as a line pilot until 2012. Uh, by then, I'd already founded uh, the company Jet Test and had been ferry flying airplanes on my days off from the airline. And uh, yeah, it's two very different uh, experiences uh, doing line pilot work and then uh, uh, ferry flying and uh, demo flying, test flying these aircraft. I, I particularly like pulling aircraft out of the desert that maybe people have given up on, uh, they never thought would fly again, and then. Uh, seeing them go through the reactivation process and delivering them to their new families, their, their new homes, and seeing them start life over again. So Sam, welcome to the main deck of the 747 Freighter. We can fit up to uh, 33 different pallets here on this deck, depending on the pallet size, and that's what makes the 747 the king of the freighters. So this aircraft, as we were talking about, started its life off as a passenger aircraft. So you will see some remnants of that that you won't see in production freighters, aircraft that came out of the uh, uh, factory as freighters. Uh, like, uh, windows here, or uh, there's still some, uh, there's still one of the passenger doors visible in the back. Of course, it's deactivated. I got super excited when I get on board of some four and I know there are two differences on a converted freighter from passenger airplane like this one compared to a factory new freighter. The first difference is, look at the nose, there is no nose loading on the converted freighter because it was a passenger bulkhead there. So it's, the nose cannot open like the uh, factory freighter. And the second thing is interesting is this feature here, you can see this little bulge here. That's the upper deck bulge on the 747, the upper deck bubble. It ends here. That's why you see a, a suddenly wider open space at the back here because up there is the upper deck. Alden is the man, made me aware of all the good work they do. Not only reactivating my favorite airplane 747 on my t-shirt here, but when you combine that aviation with humanitarian cargo sending to the less privileged country where they needed them, that's what's super meaningful and I got really motivated. They were able to achieve that a couple weeks ago on a 747 was about a ferry empty to go for a heavy maintenance overseas. I saw you guys load 80 tons of cargo inside that 747. It was so full, even the whole upper deck was fully filled. 
and that was wonderful. It was an opportunity for everybody to chip in, to help out. So this mission was made possible because of many organizations and, and industry leaders pulling resources together to accomplish this grand mission. Because it's, it's, it's just too expensive for one organization to, to, to bear. But when you have all these organizations like Sky One, Boeing, FedEx, Unical, um, the Colson family, and uh, also the, the Las Vegas Indian Chamber of Commerce, all pulling resources together, it, it made it possible to airlift 80 tons of life-saving COVID aid from San Bernardino Airport to Delhi, India. It was an amazing mission and I'm very excited to have the opportunity to do it again in a few weeks and we welcome you aboard Sam. It's going to be an amazing trip. We're going to positively impact lives and save lives. Let's do this. I love 747. You can tell from my t-shirt, right? But when you combine that aviation with something meaningful like a humanitarian mission, I'm all out for it. Let's do it, right? Absolutely.